Okay, thanks folks for tuning in. I wanted to do a fairly comprehensive review of the rifle slash carbine slash pistol sitting in front of you. It is the CMMG Guard MKGS. Uh, it's a fairly new platform and I think it's fairly innovative. And so I've got it pretty much done as it's going to be. There's only one adjustment that I'm going to make to the, to the rifle uh, NFA here pistol when I say that uh, from where it sits right now. And I'll talk about that in a second. But briefly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of history of the platform and what CMMG has done here, why I think it's so innovative, and honestly, why I think it is the Glock pattern pistol caliber carbine on the market right now. I'll cover some highs and lows of the platform and its stock configuration. Uh, and then I'll discuss briefly what I've done to mine to kind of get it where I want it and dig a little bit into my philosophy of use. I might jump over next door on my indoor pistol range. Uh, and the plan will be that I'll also run over uh, to the outdoor range today and put some rounds down range with it. In spite of the fact that it's like 23 degrees here in Birmingham, Alabama. So, CMMG Guard MKGS is a radial delayed blowback AR9. Uh, the, the version I, that's sitting in front of you as it came from the factory was their lower end version. Um, and that's all a matter of uh, perspective when I say lower end. The reason I say that it's, it was the version that just had the standard pistol buffer tube and no stock. They do have one that comes with the CAC brace and then they have SBR versions and rifle versions and so on and so forth. I think there's five versions maybe. They do make an AR9, CMMG does, in the Colt pattern lower, but it is not radial delay blowback. And honestly, I just don't understand why anybody, unless you just have, you know, a plethora of Colt pattern magazines, I don't know why you would go with that version. Um, besides, Glock mags uh, are, are readily accessible in their OEM and aftermarket offerings. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to focus this review on uh, the Glock pattern in front of you. Um, let's talk about some high points with it. And first, we'll do the obligatory uh, reload, unloading of the, of the rifle slash pistol slash carbine slash whatever you want to call this thing. Um, once again, my version just came with a pistol buffer tube. Um, you know, that those kinds of pistols are what they are in terms of, you know, stock uh, cheek welds and that kind of thing. Um, I, you know, so I guess there's plenty of people that, that run AR pistols uh, these days without braces, but it feels like the market's moved pretty, uh, pretty solidly towards running a brace on this type of setup. It comes with a Magpul MOE pistol grip. Uh, and it comes with CMMG's proprietary, and I can't remember the model number, but they do sell it separately for AR builds. Um, key mod 4N, they do have a $25, I think it is, don't quote me on that, upgrade upgrade to a MLOP. Um, I understand that I'm in the minority here, but I prefer key mod over MLOP. I find it easier to attach and unattach. I never had any issues with anything staying in place with key mod. And honestly, I think it looks better. I, I like the, the detail of the shape. Uh, I'm sort of an art nerd, and I, and I like the lines of a key mod rail slot, uh, even though I have them covered online, uh, versus the M-lock square. And that's about it. That, that's sort of what, what you get. Uh, it comes with an A2 birdcage style muzzle device. And that, and like I said, that's what you get. It is a very dependable system. A lot of people have a misunderstanding when it comes to AR style uh, rifles or pistols, carbines, whatever you want to call it. We'll just call this a carbine moving forward, so I don't have to keep disclaiming it. Uh, that are chambered in nine mil, and believing that it's just a nine mil, so there's not a lot of recoil. And while there's some truth to that, in a blowback system carbine, um, you know, straight blowback, the buffer and the bolt carrier tends to have to be pretty heavy. So there's a lot of reciprocating mass coming towards you when you're shooting that 
which can you know increase felt recoil, can in increase muzzle climb. So the number one benefit to this uh, setup from CMMG is that radial delay blowback. And if we were to pop this open, and I have to, it's a little bit different than its stock configuration and popping it open with this law tactical uh, adopt, adapter that we'll get to in a second, but you'll see that it's not the end of the world, nor is it, you know, overly complicated to break this down, uh, even with the law adapter. But if we were to take this carbine, we'll call it carbine, apart, um, you will see that it is, uh, and it's probably not going to show you on the screen. Let me see if I can't uh, zoom in enough to get you to see this. I'm, I'm using my classroom camera. I don't know that this is going to adjust. It might adjust. Um, yeah, I'm wasting time and not really accomplishing much here. Too much in the background for me to make this adjust. I got one more thing I can try. Let's take something large and white. See if I can cover up the screen enough to, I don't know if you can tell in the back of the bolt there, that's kind of trying to, kind of trying to zoom in on that or focus on that. But on the back of the bolt, you'll see that uh, where this engages with uh, the chamber, there are 45 degree radius, the back of the, the, these, the bolt is um, sort of radius at about a 45 degrees. And what that's doing is it's engaging on the out when it's uh, when the weapon cycles, and this is pulling back out of the system. You'll see that this is sprung. There's some there's a spring in there, and so the back end of this being uh, angled is delaying that. This is going to have to move in the carrier before the carrier can move back. So that's hence the the term delayed radial delayed blowback. And what that's doing is it's shaving off some of the uh, some of the concussive force, that reciprocating force uh, that, that a straight blowback system uh, usually has, which has allowed um, CMMG to use uh, almost a, a standard M16 style bolt carrier. Uh, they've made some adjustments to it. It's uh, the bolt key. This is this is properly staked, but it is the gas key is is blocked off. This is just a solid piece. It's got a cutout on the top of it where. Um, the pin that holds the carrier in can 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 pull straight up through that, and so that, there's some small modifications to the bolt carrier and bolt. But for all intents and purposes, it's running a fairly standard M16 style bolt carrier. You'll see that there's a little hole in the back of this. There's weighted uh, options you can get in a secondary kit that you can tune this to your ammo, or if you're running at suppress, you can you can tune it for that. But once again, from a philosophical standpoint. Uh, it is running a fairly standard M16 bolt carrier with a little bit of uh, modification. One thing you'll have to see, because the, that's, you know, the bolt has a spring, it's spring loaded. When you're uh, you know, installing and, and, and taking this down, you kind of have to push the, uh, push the, uh, that, sometimes I use just the forward assist to push the bolt all the way in there so you can close it. Uh, and then with the wall tactical, I just have to open this up and slide my little uh, adapter in there and function checks fine and we're back to business. So once again, number, number one addition I think uh, that's worth mentioning to this weapon is the, uh, is that radio delay blowback setup. Now, some other things that, that I think are worth mentioning about this and its stock configuration. Uh, the fit and finish on this uh, MKGS is phenomenal. Uh, I've, I've had some workings with, with CMMG before. I built a pretty high-end uh, SAS type 308 a precision rifle out of all CMMG parts uh, some years ago. And I was, I was pretty impressed with the fit and finish of the individual components that I got from CMMG. I've run CMMG um, their ejection port covers that are quick to attach and, and all that kind of stuff. So I've, I've had some parts before from CMMG, but this is the first full weapon uh, that I've had from them. And I've been incredibly impressed with the fit and finish of all this. Now, that being said, when I initially ordered this 
uh, carbine I was accidentally sent, not to no fault of CMMG, this was my local FFL, didn't realize that there were two different versions and just clicked the wrong one. Um, but they sent me the Colt version. It did not seem to have the same fit and finish. Now, I'm not saying the fit was off, but the finish was a little wonky to me. The, the upper looked just as good as what you see in front of you here, but the lower just didn't have the same attention to detail. Uh, CMMG has expressed that they're intended to maintain production of both the Colt and the Glock versions of this. Wouldn't it all be surprised to see other versions come out in the future? I really think this platform is going to take off. Um, but it's a, it's a great setup. Uh, the, the trigger, this is not the trigger that came with the carbine, but the trigger that comes with it is a step up from just a standard GI trigger, and, and you can feel that there, it's, it's pretty polished. Um, there's not a lot of grit in it. It's, it's still a, a heavier trigger, uh, you know, similar to a GI in terms of weight. Um, but reset was a little crisper, a little cleaner, not a lot of crunch or grime uh, in, in the trigger. A lot of GI triggers kind of feel like they are built out of gravel uh, until you put a bunch of thousands of rounds through them and they smooth out a little bit. But um, the stock trigger was great in this for what it is. I just had something better that I wanted to throw in it. Um, this is not the stock. Uh, and I guess what we're doing now, I guess we're starting getting into the aftermarket part so you, you understand what, what you're looking at, what I've done, and what, what it came with. Um, it doesn't come with any kind of sights or optics, not at least on the version that I, that I purchased. It has a standard um, uh, charging handle. I've just put uh, the BCM Gunfighter Mod 3, uh, just not the Ambi, just the left hand charging handle on it. I've kept the, the MOE uh, pistol grip on there, kept the standard uh, safety selector switch and bolt catch and all that release. Um, same hand guard. I did get a Strike Industries curved uh, key mod slash M lock. It works for both. Um, uh, curved foregrip. I took the A2 style flash hider off. And this is actually a barrel shroud or started life as a, is what they call um, their crowned barrel shroud by Tactical. 22, which specializes in parts for the Smith & Wesson M&P 22 and some others. Um, but it fit really nicely in this, I think, 1.37 um, inner diameter uh, key mod handguard. And so this was a five or six inch long barrel shroud. And what I did was just cut it and basically it's turned this into a, a crink off style um, flash uh, compensator. It's, it throw, it's throwing the muzzle flash out in front of me uh, and that can cut the force to keep it away from my flashlight basically and it cleans up the space between the ends of the thread or the beginning of the thread of the the, the barrel and the handguard. I kind of just like that clean look um, but it does have a, a functional um, purpose in throwing that that concussive force and flash out in front of the rifle or carbine or pistol or whatever it is. Uh, I'm running the uh, Enforce, just their momentary only uh, flashlight. I've gone through a few different flashlight setups, which is why the key mod rail is still visible here. And I don't have uh, my BCM uh, key mod covers on the front end because originally I was running a Surefire uh, that was up and in, in front of the, in the barrel. But it, I like the symmetry of this. Um, so if I'm left handed or right handed in terms of how I'm running the gun, uh, I, the, the button and the, the manual of arms basically is the same in terms of engaging the flashlight and it looks clean and it's keeping my bezel this just my bezel just um, behind uh, the, the muzzle device and I just hacksaw off the end of that barrel trail just so it's in there just enough to to stop before the first key mod bolt for the curved hand grip because there's such a little clearance inside of there uh, and, and just to clean up that edge. And, and there's no use since I'm having weight that I don't need, not that that's a super heavy part, it's, it's just aluminum. Um, what else, moving backwards a little bit, obviously I'm running uh, the Trijicon MRO. Um, this is on a mount, a pretty dinky little Picatinny mount that's taken, it's a riser, it's a Picatinny riser, and I have the, the Trijicon MRO low mount on the Picatinny riser. I have an American Defense QD mount en route for this. This is the only thing that should change in the foreseeable future of any note in terms of parts. Uh, I just didn't, I had a really good uh, opportunity today to do this video and to shoot a little bit, so I didn't want to wait on that mount that probably won't be here for another couple of days. But as you see this uh, weapon popping back up in my channel, you'll see that this is going to be running 
an American Defense QD mount. I'm running the XS Big Dot uh, 24-7, uh, 45 degree offsets. Uh, I'm trying to get you a, a sight picture. You kind of see that, how if you flip, if you flip the, the carving to the side, um, you, can, you can get that XS Big Dot sight picture. There it is about right there. Um, um, originally, I was going to just run the, the low mount on the MRO um, because I wasn't planning on running inline backup sites, so there was no point in having any kind of specific co-witness. But what the problem is, the way this MRO, the uh, the windage adjustment knob uh, that, that protrudes off of this on the low mount sits right in front of the excess big dot. So I had to, had to bring this up uh, a little higher, but it actually works better with the cheek weld. You know, and this is, you know, my face is on this. It puts the optic right where my eye is. And so I think I'll have a lot more comfort anyway running running the, uh, the carbine uh, like that. Another really good thing I've forgot to mention uh, on the on the CMMG from a stock standpoint is this magazine release it's it's big it's very tactile it just it just drips quality I don't, I don't know what it is everybody talks about this mag release uh, that puts the gun in their hand it's just it's perfectly designed falls right where it needs to be uh, it takes enough pressure that you're probably not going to accidentally with your finger straighten off the trigger to press that um, but it's not so much that you're ever fighting for it. I just think it's a really good, uh, it's a really good design for a mag release. Uh, a, a lot of other um, AR9 type manufacturers really need to dig into that. Uh, I have this, this, the stock uh, Ford Assist on there, which is really convenient. I'm glad they left it on there since that radio delay blow back. Uh, the bolt is strong, so it helps when you're breaking it down to push it forward so that it's not catching on the top of the reef. Uh, the, the lower receiver um, whenever you're taking it down. Now, let's get to the big obvious differences from where I bought this, uh, and that would be the Law Tactical Side Folding Stock Adapter uh, running to a Gearhead Works Mod 2 tail hook. We'll start at the back and work our way in. First off, this is really the only functional brace I've ever used. Okay, When I say functional, I mean I, I can use this brace Okay, and maintain sight picture and alignment and stability, um, both on my 45 degree offsets and, and with the optic. So if you did have some sort of physical disability or, or abnormality with your off shoulder or, or arm and, and you need a brace or you can't fire a weapon like this, I don't know why you'd ever look at anything other than the Gearhead Works tail hook. Now they have a Mod 1 um, that's about $100 cheaper than this. And it's just a piece right here that clamps onto a standard pistol buffer. Now, what makes the Mod 2 revolutionary, and I have no idea how they got this past the, the ATF, um, but this is actually a one, you got one, two, three, four position collapsible brace. Okay, it's a brace, right? Sure it is. Um, this, this makes for a beautiful cheek weld here. Look, guys, let me just be real with you. This, this is designed like a stock, uh, I, you know, and I, once again, I don't know how they got this through the, the ATF, um, and, and it seems like every other week the ATF goes back and forth on whether or not you're allowed to shoulder a brace, um, but if you have your Form 1 and you just want to use this as a stock, goes in the shoulder pretty well, goes on the cheek pretty well, and you can put it at whatever position you want. Um, I prefer the length of pull on the second to longest uh, option on there if I'm going to run this as a stock. And right now, as we sit on the day of, uh, of production, I'm legally allowed to put my cheek on that and put that on my shoulder. And that's the position in terms of length of pull that I like to run it at right there. Um, now, because I have the Law Tactical Side Folding Stock Adapter, I can reach over, hit this button, as you've already seen me do, fold this up into a super duper compact um, uh, presentation. I've, I've got a Kelty Ardent bag order that this will fit right, you know, right inside of. Uh, it, with, with my setup, and this is actually a little longer, I think, than maybe what the stock would be. I'm not really sure if I gained, how much I gained, if I gained some length with, with running that, that flash hider I made, but, um, or compensator. But from the tip of this adapter uh, bracket to the tip of, uh, of my muzzle device is 17, I'm sorry, 18 inches. So I've got 18 inches folded like this with that Law Tactical side-folding stock adapter. 
uh, from MRO to the bottom of a 33 round stick mag, it's 13 inches. And then width to width at the widest part where the brass deflector and the edge of the stock from width to the width, uh, it is four and a half inches wide. So it doesn't take much of a bag uh, to put this in. Now, I've got plenty of tactical bags that this would fit in, but I really wanted something a little bit more low profile, sort of like a gray, a gray man type um, idea. So that's why I went with that, that Kelty Arden. It doesn't at all look like a tactical bag. So if I ever found myself in need to transport this on my person, legally within the confines of the law where I am, uh, th that would be a great way to do that and not stick out like a tactical sore of thumb, you know, with molly webbing and everything over my bag. It's just screaming that there's a gun in there, okay? Uh, really, the only thing you do in installing this law tactical is a super simple device, and it's genius in its simplicity. I'm surprised it, it took the market this long to bear something like this out. Is this just installs much in the same way this first part of the bracket, much in the same way that a standard uh, buffer tube would install? And there's this little tiny piece you've already seen me you've already seen me take it out, but I'll do it again because it's not at all difficult. This little plug goes in the back of the bolt carrier. Um, make sure it's seated all the way in there. It is. And all this does is, is as you fold this over and the, and the buffer tube goes, obviously installs the other half of this, same buffer, no, nothing proprietary with this law tactical brace except for that plug. This just extends the bolt carrier to engage your buffer. Um, and and the, the only thing that it, it presents to you in, in terms of difficulty is when you want to break the, the, the rifle down, which you've seen me do, uh, I have to open this up, pull that plug out before I can open up a receiver. You know, I'm adding a ten, five seconds, you know, I guess, to the process. That's well worth um, an administrative five seconds uh, to have the ability to go from 20 whatever inches uh, to 18 inches in terms of storage. Uh, this actually hangs in my closet at home inside of a, an old jacket. So if someone's breaking into my house, uh, I can get to it very quickly, uh, un rip the zipper down, open the jacket, and this is just hanging on a secondary hanger just inside the jacket. I pick it up off the, the hanger and it, it's clipped on the adapter and bam, I've got, I've got a carbine ready to rock and roll. And if somebody ever broke into my house and I wasn't there and my dog didn't kill them, which is highly unlikely, um, uh, you know, they're not gonna go through my old jackets probably. So. Just a, 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 something you might want to consider doing if, if that works in your environment. Um, I have a, I'm going to mess this up because I just had a brain fart. I think it's an LMT or JMT. I think it's a JMT single stage trigger. It's adjustable for reset and all that stuff. Um, it, very economical for the, 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 the quality of trigger you get out of that. It's obviously a stainless steel, skeletonized. Um, it's, it's a great single stage trigger. So I think I've covered my favorite things about this in its OEM fashion. I've covered uh, all the aftermarket parts, I believe. One thing I didn't uh, I didn't mention that the OEM uh, key mod and probably the M lock as well, but I can't I don't know that I'll for sure off the top of my head does have an integrated QD sling swivel. Now, the stock buffer plate back here does not have a QD sling swivel, which seems a little strange to me. They should have just put a single point QD sling swivel in the back. But it does run an ambidextrous clip-on style sling, um, so you have a clip on each side of it. So it's sort of ambi. It doesn't translate back and forth very well ambidextrously, but you can choose which sides you want it dominantly clipped to. But that leaves you with a QD front and a clip back. So uh, the, the beauty of the Law Tactical adapter is it does have an integrated QD sling swivel. So I can run this two-point or, or, or single point uh, with, with the same QD um set up my mag tool i think it's an ms3 that i run on my 300 blackout and some other stuff so uh, that that's that's gonna go so i think i've covered everything there in terms of uh, what it what it came like what, what what my favorite things about it are and and um so the aftermarket stuff that i've added to it now there are a couple of cons with this system um and they're very they're very minute i'm gonna i'm gonna get you know, I'm, I'm digging into the minutia here to, to come up with some cons, but I think they're worth mentioning. Um, one, the one con that I have found does not exist with mine is that there are there have been some 
reliability issues reported uh, with the CMMG Guard MKGS with jacketed hollow point ammunition. Now, I've only ran a few different types of jacketed hollow point ammunition um, because I carry a very specific round. I, I carry federal HST 124 grain plus piece okay, in, my, in my sidearm. So I uh, can still carry this most of the time. If I'm concealed, I do have a Glock 43 bitch running the same ammo. Obviously, this is a different magazine, so that, that's sort of a, a moot point as it pertains to, to uh, going back and forth with this. Um, so, I mean, this is in an appendix carry rig right now. And then on, and when I'm on duty, uh, I'm running a Zev um, plus whatever base plate on a Magpul magazine. Um, but you know, I have tested this round and this weapon with absolutely no reliability issues out of any magazine, and it uh, patterns very well. I mean, the, the grouping is, is very tight with that round as well. Um, no issues with the law of tactical, no issues with, with any of it. It just, it just runs just like I would hope it would run. So um, that's really all that matters to me. Uh, I don't, the federal HST is not going anywhere anytime soon. So the fact that I can run this um, with what I run and can still carry in on duty uh, makes it very convenient. Now, I'll, I'll, but I'll still present that as a con. My understanding is that they did have some reliability issues um, with serial numbers before 200, and then they made some adjustments. And whatever those adjustments are will be retroactively done if you present your, your weapon to CMMG. So if you have one of the very, very first ones, um, sub 200 serial number, it might be worth contacting CMMG and seeing if they can retroactively uh, make whatever adjustments they made post that serial number uh, moving forward. Mine's in the 300, so I'm past that that mark, and that may be why I've had such good success with everything I've run through it. Uh, stock uh, Glock mags, Korean stick mags, Korean uh, stock uh, OEM stick mags. I have a Korean drum that runs in it. Uh, ETS mags run on it. I have ETS mags with Terran Tactical base plates run on it. I've got Magpul mags. I've got Magpul mags with uh, Zev base plates that run on it. So I haven't had any issue with any magazine or ammo that I run. And most of the ammo that I've put through this have, has been factory reloaded ammo by zero. So uh, it's just been a very dependable and reliable weapon, but that's something you might want to think about, especially if you have a sub 200 serial number. The only con with the, with, with, the CMMG guard that I have so far is relates to how my finger goes into the trigger guard. Okay, let me turn a little bit. See if I can get you a better angle. Okay, I'm used to to handguns, and I would make this same grip uh, with with a rifle or carbine as well. But with the handgun, I get really high into the web of my hand, so I can get high on that bore axis and curve my, my off fingers or my, the rest of my grip, not, not my trigger finger, and obviously my trigger finger straighten off the trigger, but I curve the rest of these down. If you'll see how far this is sticking out, and it's going to do that pretty much with any trigger guard or any rifle, but the edge, the bottom edge of the trigger guard, which is obviously monolithic in terms of its construction, it's not something that you can remove and adjust, it's just built into the lower, the bottom edge is very sharp. The inside edge has been radius down. I feel like they sort of got that backwards. But my fingers in the trigger guard, I really don't see a time where it's going to be riding on the bottom of the trigger guard. I think if they were going to radius something and not radius the other, they would have better been better off leaving the inside edge of this sharp and curving the bottom edge so that this part of my, my middle finger, when it makes contact in that high, firm grip, it's not digging into that corner. With gloves, it's not an issue. Under stress is not going to be an issue. Okay, I'm not going to be in a gunfight worried about, uh, you know, is that digging into my finger? But even just after a little bit of time on the range, I look at my knuckle there, and I have a pretty good callus on that part of my finger anywhere from shooting pistols and rifles for so long. But it still digs into that, and it's, I mean, it, there's no way to put it other than it's uncomfortable. Okay? It's just uncomfortable. Now, what am I going to do? Because I, because I'm crazy enough to do it, and and, I, and I'm not worried about messing up the, the weapon. I'm going to take a Dremel tool, and I'm going to, I'm going to basically do a, a rifle version of an undercut on that trigger guard to get rid of that and really radius it in as far as I can go without affecting 
the durability of that part. It's very, very wide, so I'm not worried about making it weak. That's not a part that, that's really load-bearing anyway. And, and, to, and I'm going to fix that myself. But, but CMMG, if you ever stumble across this review, the one thing you need to approve on this on this weapon, and any lower that's designed this way, is you need to give us undercuts on both sides of that. Radius that down. Um, you've got plenty enough material to work with so that shooters, whether they're right-handed or left-handed, aren't killing this part of their middle finger on that sharp edge. Uh, I have no problem radiusing that down, put some Maluma black on there, uh, and fixing it myself. And eventually this will probably get Cerakoted anyway, so it's not going to matter. Um, but it would be nice if it was done from the factory and, and underneath uh, this, this really nice anodization that they've got going on with their parts here. Um, it's, it's, it's not unlike the the principle of an of a undercut or a double undercut here. I mean, th you're getting so much higher. You want to get in there high on the bore axis. That can be uncomfortable to dig into your finger. Uh, so that's why so many people are, are doing that with their uh, handguns, uh, specifically Glocks, just because of how blocky that trigger guard is. Uh, but but this could benefit greatly from that. Everything else that, that they've done from the factory is spot. I'm talking about just spot on. Um, so I think that should probably just about wrap up the, the tabletop version um, uh, or, or, or portion of this video. It's already going to be a long video. Uh, I may break it down into parts and upload it separately, but I'm probably going to be too lazy to do that, so I'll just include it and you can skip around as you want. Maybe I'll put timestamps uh, in the description box to take you to different points of, uh, of discussion here. I'm going to run some rounds down range with the, uh, with the CMMG, just on a little pistol plate rack. Let's uh, play around with a little bit. Here's some ding a ring ding -a. Still at a hundred yards.
no problem. So to wrap up the range day, um, super impressed with the gun and its current setup. Uh, it was really fun running it back and forth. Uh, I think a couple of the videos from me running the Glock build snuck in there just because I was I was going back and forth between the two a lot. Ran my Ruger 1022 out there. It's a really cool range, the FOP range in Pleasant Grove outside of Birmingham, Alabama. But just super impressed with uh, the CMMG. Very reliable. And any issues that I had really stemmed from ammo or just after, you know, four or 500 rounds and bolt getting a little bit dry. And there's a lot of un... I noticed when I took it apart, there's a lot of unburned powder uh, in there with the carbon so that's that's probably a little bit more on the ammo than anything else obviously so uh, that but had very few malfunctions uh, not nearly as much as you might expect with that kind of cheap ammo running a, a fairly dry bolt on a brand new gun that hasn't been broken in so I think I had two failures to eject the whole time and both of them seem to be uh, ammo related Ran three different brands of magazines with no issues, ETS, Magpul, Glock. Actually, in a fourth one, I ran the Korean stick mags, which is actually one of those in the, in the weapon right now. So uh, I hope you could hear the audio pretty well. Ran it out to 100 yards. Uh, the video that I shot was, you know, sitting at the, the table with the rifle just supported on my elbow and had absolutely no problems ringing that steel to 100 yards. And so I went ahead, I didn't get this on video, but I went ahead and stood up and probably ran 10 or 15 rounds in a row at the standing position, nailing that, that gong at 100 yards. And there was three different plates out there. I'm not exactly sure what size they are, um, but you know, just transitioning back and forth, bang, bang, bang on the way up and bang, bang, bang on the way down on those three gongs and had no issues uh, even with the the red dot and i think this that the mro runs what a, a two moa maybe it's a four moa i think it's a two moa uh maybe it says on the side of it i got so many red dots i can't keep track of anything uh it doesn't say on the side of it what what size dot it is what moa dot it is it's either a two or a four i'm pretty sure it's a two uh but no no issues with the mro even on the crappy little uh picatinny rail mount riser no issues with it so uh, very very pleased with it I know this is a super long video. It may end up just being split into parts. Um, but if you're going to get into a pistol caliber carbine, especially looking for something that's Glock compatible, I don't know how you could do any better than the CMMG Guard. It is a little pricey, but I think you get what you pay for a lot of times. And you definitely get what you pay for out of this. So stay tuned to the channel as always. Uh, this is something that you will probably see a lot pop up in the future. I know I say that all the time, and then I get so busy shooting and teaching and doing whatever things i got to do with life that that it, it takes a while sometimes for the next video to hit. But this is so cheap, so fun uh, to run that this will definitely be popping up a lot. Not to mention that Sean, the other major contributor to the channel, has... Uh, has the same rifle and, and much the same setup. He has a mod two. He's got a law tactical and route running a different optic and a different flashlight setup. But, but, uh, there'll be a lot of good videos coming out about the guard. We're going to get out in the woods and shoot it, run and gun a little bit, uh, and shoot some steel at the range and, and obviously some of the paper stuff on the indoor range as well. So, um, everything's sort of coming together with, with, with the two Glock, uh, patterned weapons. I've got my, my sidearm, which is a Timberwolf, uh, m based on a Glock setup. It's it's not not really any parts in here that are that are OEM Glock, but um, you know this coupled with a, a Glock pattern carbine uh, is, makes for a lot of fun, a lot of cross compatibility. Uh, when I do the NRA Law Enforcement Firearms Instructor course for tactical and shooter tactical shooting instructor, these are the two weapons I'll be running, and I'll try to GoPro a lot of that and whatever they'll let me video uh, to get some good footage of running the gun in, in, in that kind of environment. So anyway, thanks for tuning in for this long video. I hope you got something out of it. As always, message me, comment if there's anything specific you want to see or have me talk about, and I'll do my best to oblige.